Hello everyone and welcome back to the Frame Channel. Hand tools are used in millions of homes across the globe. They come in various sizes and shapes with price tags that make them easy to purchase from any nearby hardware store. Most of us are familiar with these hand tools, but have you ever stopped to wonder how these products are made? and how manufacturers manage to keep pace with the demand? In today's feature, we will explore the processes involved in the production of these important tools and the companies that make them. In the United States, wrenches feature among the most popular hand tools. They come in various sizes and shapes, in large, high-end tools manufacturing companies like Snap-on, these wrench combinations start life as large steel bars. After being cut into smaller sections, known as billets, they are forged at around 1,000 degrees Celsius before being reshaped by a 2,500-ton press. Once the ends have been precision drilled, the tools are stamped with the company logo and polished. A second 1600 degree Celsius firing is used to strengthen the metal, which is then polished again using water and ceramic abrasives. Finally, the wrenches are strength tested, coated with nickel and cleaned before being boxed and dispatched. The introduction of offset extension wrenches has also simplified the use of these tools, with some requiring very minimal energy input. They are mostly adapters designed to be used with all kinds of tools. Bolts start life in much the same way. Enormous steel rods are cut down to size, forged, and then pressed into a die. Each component is hardened through a second firing. Drills are then used to produce uniform holes, after which the threads are created through processes such as roll threading. The bolt surfaces are then treated with zinc to ensure longevity and the finished products receive a final quality check before shipping. While mass production remains the most common process used in the manufacture of hand tools, new technologies are also being employed to ensure accuracy and efficiency. Additive manufacturing, for instance, uses computer-aided design, or CAD, to create products by layering materials in the software and using specialized 3D printers to produce them. Due to the diverse shapes and sizes of hand tools, however, the machining process is usually very meticulous for each variety. Naturally, upsurges in home renovation products have led to higher demand for tools of the trade. From home improvement to upcycling, do-it-yourself projects, or DIY, is a significant driver of demands for these tools. While we may think of this as a modern phenomenon, its roots actually stretch back much further. Published in the 1670s, Joseph Moxon's Mechanic Exercises is commonly thought of as the first ever DIY manual, enabling members of the public to learn skills such as blacksmithing, joinery, engraving, metalworking, and more. In the 1950s and 60s, growing media interest, rising home ownership, and shorter working weeks resulted in another DIY boom and, more recently, lockdowns have served to further increase the popularity of this pursuit. One company to have benefited from this trend is Georgia-based retailer The Home Depot, which first opened its doors in 1978. 
As one of the largest home improvement retailers in the world, the company offers tools, construction equipment, home appliances, and services across more than 2,300 locations worldwide. The company generated $38.9 billion of revenue during the first quarter of fiscal year 2022, an increase of about $1.4 billion. This represents an impressive 3.8% rise in sales compared to the first quarter of 2021, despite a slowdown in the U.S. housing market. Over on the European continent, another manufacturer also waxes strong in the global utilities tool sector. Founded in Germany in 1886, Bosch has firmly established itself as a household name among tradespeople and DIY aficionados alike. The company, which employs more than 400,000 workers worldwide, generated almost $84 billion in sales in 2021. It produces an impressive array of power tools, including cordless screwdrivers, laser measurers, demolition hammers, angle grinders, impact drivers, miter saws, and much more. Powering these tools has also been a major concern. Recently, the company introduced longer-lasting rechargeable 4.0 lithium-ion batteries. But what lies in store for the hand tool industry over the longer term? After recovering from the general decline experienced by the global hand tools market in 2020, owing to COVID-19 restrictions, the demand for these products remains high. However, although current forecasts predict a notable growth pattern in the coming years, rising inflation, the costs of raw materials, energy and manufacturing is on the increase. However, the fact that these tool manufacturing companies are constantly striving to satisfy users by introducing innovative and more sustainable products suggests that demand for high quality hand tools will certainly keep the market going. That's the end of this feature on The Frame. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch us on our next video. See you next time.